Hey, Juris, if you're Jupiter and Taurus, this video is for you. Um, so this one is actually going to be a little different than the ones before it because it decided it wanted it to be. Also, my eyes right now are not the greatest. And I was like, oh, maybe I should like wait until do it later or wait until the sun moves and the lighting in here is a little better. Um, but I was like, mm, no, nah, I got the feeling that I'm just supposed to take it a little slower. And, you know, it's Taurian energy, so <laughs> I got a lot of Taurus in my chart. Um, I heavily identify with Taurus. And so um, I guess I'll just go for it because I'm feeling that. And this is also different because I've been heading the spreads with the moon. Excuse me. But Temperance came out for this one. So this one is headed by Temperance. So it's going to be shifted a little bit. But it also fits the energy of like taking it slower, right? Um, and I'll also mention here that I noticed that in this deck, Temperance and the star are the same person. Um, and Temperance, she has one foot in the water, one foot on the ground, and she is pouring from one cup into the other. In the star, she is pouring out both cups, but one cup is being poured into the water and one cup is being poured into the ground. I can't remember where her feet are, but um, the energy of the star is here as well, I guess, for the three rings today. Um, and so, yeah, let's get into it. Let's, can we, let's, let's just take a, t let's take a deep breath together, Taurus, Jupiter and Taurus, Juris. Hold the exhale. One more. the exhale okay I don't know why I had a feeling to do that but let's go so we're starting off with what we're keeping in balance we have strength in reverse and we have <laughs> ooh, the six of cups upright So I think I was thinking about Jupiter and Taurus, right? And what Jupiter and Taurus feels like. Jupiter is a planet of expansion, ancient wisdom, also good fortune. Um, in the previous three, I, for, I think I forgot to mention that. So not only like do you want to expand in these areas or can you expand in these areas, but you also find fortune when you are in these areas. Um, and then I'm thinking of Taurus, and of course, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking of like, you know, slow moving, um, cooking, family, home, comfort, comfort. I was like, oh, the person who invented the lazy boy. I wonder if he was a Taurus or if his Jupiter was in Taurus. <laughs> the, the person who invented the microwave, Jupiter and Taurus. Convenience. Um, expanding on convenience, I feel like. Um, and so here we have strength in reverse, and then we have the Six of Cups. So there may be a past relationship that isn't as comfortable as it used to be before. Um, and I think this is calling for patience. And maybe that's why we lead off with temperance. Maybe that's why I had the feeling to take, you know, the few breaths. Maybe that's why I also had the feeling to take this a little slower. But it also might be deeper than I initially think as well. So Six of Cups is all about nostalgia. It's thinking about the past and it can be dwelling in the past. So maybe this is also having the strength to not get stuck in the past. It's having the strength to move forward because you haven't necessarily had it. Um, and that can be one of the pitfalls of a Jupiter in Taurus or maybe even a Jupiter in Cancer since you do want to expand so much 
in the realms of comfortability, in the realms of providing, Cancer may be more providing and Taurus may be more just like being comfortable. Acquiring, I think, is more Taurus and then providing is more Cancer. Um, but yeah, maybe it's like you're, you're too comfortable. You're too stuck where you are and it's unbalanced. So it's like, you know, we don't necessarily have to completely come home and rearrange all of the furniture. But, you know, there are times when um, if it makes sense to rearrange some things and if you want to buy a few new things, like, you know, you have to have room for it. So you can't just move everything into a place and not like accommodate for it. Because if you don't have the space, where is it going to go? Um, this could also be the energy of creating space. So maybe you have to pull back from someone in order to give to yourself or pull back from a few people in order to create space for something or someone new to come in. This could be you with strength in reverse. It could be giving too much um, to someone or something that I don't want to say is archaic or outdated or old, but it's like, I don't know, there is pleasure here. It's not all bad with the Six of Cups upright, but it, it might be too comfortable. Um, it's getting to the point where you're not expanding, where you're not growing, where you're not um, really exploring the things that you should be exploring or maybe even that you want to be exploring. Because um, this is strength in reverse, right? That could be you sacrificing some kind of passion of yours for people who are people or situations. It could be a job. Like, you know, take these as they resonate. It could be a job. It could be a person. It could be a whole lot of things. Um, I'm going to say, like, I might say one thing, but it could also be like, you know, commitment is commitment, whether it's relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's family, anything that is longstanding. Um, right? And so it's almost like, you know, your passion is suffering because of this, but it's not completely bad. So that's why you bring it into balance. You pull away a little bit more, maybe so you can give to yourself or so you can give to something new. Um, oh, I can barely read with a root. But let's see. Because I think this one will be this. So this is the moon now. Oof, I'm just going with it. I'm going with it. Now we have the Seven of Pentacles upright. And the Six of Wands in reverse. So we have another six down here. I guess I can show these to the camera. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Can you even see this? Maybe that'll help because this light is coming in. <laughs> In the six of wands in reverse. Um, oh, and I forgot to talk about. Did I miscount again? Give me one second. Four, five. Both of these are five. I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I didn't. Um, I did forget to mention the energy at the top of the deck, though. That was left. Um, oh, I didn't explain anything. So I'm using the Spirit Keeper's Tarot from Benabel Wen. She has a channel here on YouTube. I don't even know if you can see the box. Uh, Spirit Keeper's Tarot. And I'm also using the Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz. I love Kim Kranz. This one, the Wild Unknown Tarot and the Wild Unknown Animal Spirits, Animal Oracle, that, those were the first two decks I loved. Um, and I love them. And then I had to get her archetype deck because I just found out she had an archetype deck, so I got it for Christmas. <laughs> um, but I'm using the Spirit Keeper's Tarot to as uh, signifiers, significators, to anchor in the energy. Um, and then I'm using the Wild Unknown for the actual spread. But at the top of the anchoring, we have the Page of Wands in reverse, which is the Stronghold of the Flame. And here you can see a lizard holding, hanging on to the wand, and the pages in this deck bring messages. So I'm going to pull a card 
at the end to see what that message is. Um, but actually, she's upright. Because as I'm looking at her, she's upright. So she's not in reverse. Um, but this is a message of... Maybe your passions are changing. Maybe you're coming unto, into this sudden shift of interest. And you might not necessarily know how to handle it. Because it might be outside of the realm that you're used to. So it might require you to pick up and to move some things. Yeah. But so then this is like... Interesting. Give me one second. I'm trying to figure out. Okay. So it would be that and then this. All right, I'm good. So this will stay the same. So this is something to release, which is exactly it. Okay, which is what I was just saying. Because with the Seven of Pentacles, I feel like, you know, Seven of Pentacles is the energy of, um, and this is Taurian energy. This is third decan of Taurus. This is the final, the final step of Taurus before we enter the Earth Kingdom of Virgo. Um, but this is the energy of giving something time and energy and effort. Um, and it is... And like I've said before, you know, farmers don't plant seeds not expecting a good harvest. Because if you're not expecting it to be a good season, why would you plant in that season and waste good seed, right? So this is the energy of you steadily building, steadily expanding towards one thing. But then with the six of wands in reverse, I don't think that you are necessarily taking yourself into consideration as you've been building. Yeah, because right now I'm getting a feel of like you've been working in a specific area because it's what you thought you had to do. Either you were told to do it. It's a family thing. I also feel this like I feel heavy familial um, sort of not pressure, but, you know, everyone does the same thing. It could be a business in the family. It could be a way of handling things in the family. It's um, generational structure. There's some certain generational structure some certain generational structure being upheld and it's almost standing in direct opposition to whatever new realization you've come into whatever new burning desire you have and this is like you not giving yourself an opportunity to fully blossom and claim this victory over your past because there's this pressure of like needing to fall in line with everyone else um, and this is what you need to release, right? And we started with temperance this time. So, you know, Taurus, y'all don't, <laughs> this is, so these Jupiter readings are interesting because you don't necessarily have to be a Taurus to have this energy, right? And that's one of the beautiful things about a complete astrological breakdown is in different areas of life and in different scenarios and situations, we're not always the same person. Now, if you have a stellium in your chart, or if you have a lot of stelliums, then you'll have a lot of consistencies between a few different areas. Let's say your Mercury, Venus, and Mars are all in the same sign. So you might think like that sign, you'll love like that sign, and you'll fight like that sign. But if your Neptune is somewhere else, if your Neptune is on the opposite side, right, then you might dream of or fantasize about things that are completely opposite to you so it could be in that case you know like with your neptune opposing it you sort of see yourself in a way that is different than what you actually are because in actuality where your heart and your mind is and where your drive is is on the opposite side of that neptune but neptune is gonna cast whatever illusions that it's gonna cast where it sits so you could be like moving, you can have a lot of fire and a lot of air in your chart. But if your Jupiter is in Taurus, when it comes to expanding on things, or if your Jupiter is restricted, or if your Jupiter is in a slower sign, 
when it comes to learning, when it comes to growing, when it comes to expanding, when it comes to finding happiness and just being jovial and joyful and enjoying life, like, you know, you could be a little slower. You could be like, you know, you don't necessarily... And it could be like you're not even closed-minded, but it just takes you a long time to let certain things go and to experience new things. It takes you a long time to get comfortable enough with yourself to allow yourself to enjoy something new. And that's what like the kind of energy I'm feeling is, right? Because like these are in balance. We have strength in reverse. We have the six of cups. There's holding on to the new thing and not completely following into this new passion. Like you're not going after it like a ravenous lion trying to get a little antelope, a gazelle, a, a wildebeest or anything like that. You're like, you're looking at that thing and you're like, I had to run all the way here. And that wildebeest is chilling right there. And I'm not even like super hungry right now. And I don't really feel like moving right now. So I'm going to try to sneak up on it and like wrestle it down instead of like pouncing from 50 feet away. <laughs> and like, I think that's fine. It's just like, you know, getting a little bit of movement. It's thinking about yourself and considering yourself a little more. Giving yourself enough weight in this equation that you are a significant factor right like you're not negligible um we should also strive in parts to make ourselves happy because if we're not happy in ourselves then how we give to other people then is diminished um now you can find joy in giving but you also need to give to yourself um and what you need to externalize is if you are overwhelmed, oof, man, Jupiter and Taurus, what's going on with y'all? I got the Ten of Wands in reverse and the High Priestess in reverse. Um, I feel like this is the energy of people aren't mind readers. People don't know when you're overwhelmed because Jupiter and Taurus, you might take on a lot of stuff just to make other people feel comfortable, just to make other people feel happy. And so if you are in a space where you're upset because it's like you're constantly giving, 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 you're constantly pushing yourself to do more and you're going beyond for other people, but it seems like no one is going beyond and above and beyond for you. Um, maybe that's because they don't know. Right? Like, if, if you don't make certain things known, then you can't really hold people responsible. And I feel like you need to release some of these burdens. It, it's almost like you have to show how overburdened you are in order for people to begin to understand like how much you actually do. Because it could be the case that when you try to pull back from something or someone and when you try to give yourself more time than that person's situation might, you know, they're gonna notice because especially if you're always there for someone, they're gonna notice if you decide to pull away. But you know, it's like, hey, like this is like, you know, be upfront, be honest and tell it like it is. You have the moon and the high priestess occupying the same similar space, but the high priestess is in reverse, whereas the moon is upright. Um, I read all the significators upright. I believe the moon was... No, the moon was upright. What was in reverse? The will of fortune, maybe? Anyway, let me keep going. Um, this might be a long one. It's like, you know, they don't know and you're going to have to make them aware. People aren't mind readers and people will keep piling things on you as long as you allow them to, especially if you wear it well. Like if you wear all 10 of these wands well, people aren't going to know that you're stressed out or that you're overburdened. If you always have a smile on your face and then it's like, you know, and then they're like, oh my gosh, why didn't you tell me? Like if I had known you were going through all this, I wouldn't have put this on you. I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you say something? And you'd be like, yeah, well, you know, like... 
I don't really like to tell people, you know, if I'm ever, you know, feeling overburdened or whatever, because I don't want people to then in turn feel like they have to care for me. Maybe you don't necessarily trust everyone to provide a level of comfort for you that is actually comforting to you. Um, maybe that's not the case. Maybe you just don't like you don't allow people to worry about you. Maybe you've been the type of person that's always had to step up and care for others. Um, and so now you're learning how to be cared for in the way that you've done it to everyone else. Um, but yeah, this is something to like show a little bit more, to tell people so that they are aware, right? Because if they're not aware, then how will they know? Oof, now we got Capricorn energy. We got the devil and we have the Hierophant in reverse. Jupiter and Taurus, we got Capricorn coming in upright and we got Taurus chilling in reverse. Um, this line is all about learning. Something you need to get better at, something you need to expand in. So with this devil energy here, Honestly, I'm feeling it as like you need to learn how to treat yourself. And you need to learn how to be okay with indulging. In oh, see, this isn't indulgence in a Torian way. Because the Taurus card is in reverse. So I'm not talking about indulging as in like, you know, spending a lot of money on... Um, on, I don't know, like luxury bath soaps and body lotions and food <laughs> and that kind of comfort stuff. This is indulging in a way that's going to build you up. Um, right? This isn't necessarily like, you know, the devil card can speak to addictions. We ain't, I ain't talking about getting addicted to anything. But it is coming, It's it's getting familiar with treating yourself in a way that actually builds yourself up and not treating in yourself, not treating yourself in a way that is making up for, it's like, there's a difference between a comfort treat yourself and a self love treat yourself. Um, when you treat yourself out of comfort, excuse me, that could be uh, retail therapy. That could be um, eating your feelings. That could be, being a little couch potato, I got a lot of Taurus in my chart. So if you got a Jupiter in Taurus, like, please don't be offended. If you are a Taurus, please don't be offended. It just is what it is sometimes. Um, but no, this is about doing things for you that actually matter. Doing something for you that will further you, right? Because Capricorn energy is all about building. Taurian energy is fixed. So what you're doing isn't necessarily to keep you where you are. But it's like baby steps to get you um, to get you to where you're going. Because goats, they live in mountains. Some goats live in mountains, right? I don't think the goats necessarily sprint up the mountains. <laughs> but, you know, they're sure of their footing. They steadily, slowly make their way up. And they can climb up mountains. They can scale mountains. Um... And so I think that's that's sort of the energy that you're sort of being called to. It's learn how to continuously in small ways give to yourself so that whatever mountain you find yourself in front of, it won't be as insurmountable and the blockage won't be as large. Um, give me one second. Because I need to remember how I built this.
I did that. Okay. I don't know what this is, but I think I mixed it up, but that is fine. Hold on, wait. Five, six, seven, five, yes, okay. So you got two cards here. Oh, snap, all right. Um, uh, what, four? This is the fifth time I'm doing this. And the in four times that I've done this, I get two cards in space number five. There's only once. I only got one card. There's supposed to be one card in every space, but if two cards want to come out, I I take them. And in this space, I always get two cards. But you got the Three of Cups upright and the Ten of Pentacles upright. This is very glorious energy. Um. There might be. Let me read this again. I'm sorry. One moment, please. Why is five? Because six is this one. Gotcha. Boom. This is going to be a little different. I'm sorry. Well, I said that in the beginning, and now I'm just trying to follow what I did. Okay. This is the energy of a blockage. Usually there's two cards for a blockage, which makes sense. But it's the Ten of Pentacles upright, and it's the Three of Cups upright. I think the blockage in this case might be in your mind. Because following along this, the story so far is that you have to, you're being called or you're feeling like there's something new that you want to do. You can't dive fully in because you don't necessarily dive fully into anything that might be brand new to you. Um, even if you have a sort of natural knack and ability and talent for it, you might not necessarily dive full through, full in. Um, and it was like, you know, pulling away from some folks. It was expressing to them how you feel. It's not necessarily falling in line just for the sake of falling in line. It's learning to give to yourself. And yeah, okay. So you get the Ten of Cups upright, the Three of Cups upright, and then you get the Three of Wands in reverse. Two threes! Boom, boom, boom. You got two sixes and two threes. Um, I feel like... Once you sort of like let somebody know what's up, they might actually do this with you. And then this 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 thing that you do for yourself to give to yourself could actually potentially become a ritual that you do with someone else. Right. It's like, let's say that, I don't know, there's some brand new way you want to expand. You want to build yourself. You want to build something new. You want to start something new. There's a brand new burning passion that you have. But. It's going to take too much time and energy and effort away from everything that you're already committed to, right? And now you're sitting in this space. What happens when that happens a lot of times is you get a lot of friction. And then you start to sort of... The, the, the friction is going and then things that get too close like kind of catches a spark. It, like it sparks and it jumps off. And if someone comes too close, they'll get shot, right? Maybe if you tell somebody about this thing, they might actually, either they'll like, they'll be intrigued and they'll want to do it with you, or they will know ways in which you can go about it. Um, the Three of Wands in this deck is all about being supported by other people, but coming to the point where you have to go it alone. Um, other people can only carry you so far, at a certain point you sort of have to step up yourself, right? But maybe this thing, you might think you have to do it alone, but there's actually people waiting there to do it with you. But you wouldn't know that unless you tell them, unless you give them the chance and the opportunity. And every time I see this card, I notice the distance between the two birds on the left and the third bird. It might be the right on your, in your case. but And it's like the two birds are looking at that third bird. And even the cup at the bottom is sort of spaced out a little further, right? Like, give that person a chance to come in. And then, what you need to sort of, like, reflect on internally. Hmm. 
is with the four of swords and the star. I forget that y'all can't see these. And so I forget to like bring them up and show them. You got the four of swords and the star in reverse. I think, so this is the energy of, it's the energy of pause. It's the energy of reflection. Um, you might have to build yourself up to this. You might have to convince yourself basically of what I said earlier, that if you're not at peace, if you're not happy, it's going to hinder and affect your ability to do basically anything um, because of that friction, right? And I think this is for you to really take a moment of pause and to ask if where you've been heading with the seven of pentacles, if this the if this direction that you've been heading in is one that you actually want. And you might have to, you might come upon the question of like, when did I stop wanting this? And why did I stop wanting this? Why isn't this enough anymore with the star in reverse? You know, because the star gives hope. And maybe at one point it was something that you really, really wanted to do, but now you you're not really sure. So with this is it's like take a moment to really go inside and take stock. I'm gonna pull this card now. And it's the shining dew. Oh my gosh, the Knight of Cups. It's the only unicorn in the deck. Um I wish there was more light. I'm so sorry, y'all. This card maybe it's fine to y'all. My eyes are just my eyes. Um the Page of Wands with the Knight of Cups gives air to the situation. And steam is also good for cleansing, right? You're cleansing something by going through this whole process. Um, by really evaluating it. The star is also Aquarian energy, right? Which is air. Um, and I said, here, I'll take that. The Ace of Wands, upright. Is the Ace of Wands here? No, strength was here. Um, I said that the energy of the star was here because the, the healer and, um, the healer and the angel, the star and temperance in this deck are like the same person, but the star is in reverse. And so the healer is here crowning this whole thing to bring the star upright, to bring things into a new balance, to... help you proceed at a pace that is comfortable and that at a pace that doesn't too much upset someone else. But with this Knight of uh, Cups here, with this Shining Dew here, I think it's going to be for you to really care about yourself and to really care about, yeah, yourself. Because in this, in this reading, it was the, the page, the Stronghold of the Flame. And I've been getting fire in this as like something that you want to do for yourself. Something that you believe will bring you greater joy, greater happiness, will bring you greater value, will bring everyone around you potentially um, into a better place. But it's like everyone is comfortable or you're comfortable with what they, what you think they're comfortable with. And you think they might resist the changes that you want to implement because you see it working out better, but it might take you some time to really figure out how to do it. And so now you're in this weird space where you want something new and you believe you can make it better, but like it, it's the way it's been for a long time. Now, if this is related to work, sometimes there are new fresh ideas, even in relationships, there are new fresh ideas that come in that spice things up that other people get excited about. And it's like, wow, I can't believe no one's ever seen this. Like we've been operating this way for a long time. And this, this change that you're suggesting drastically improves everything, <laughs> right? Potentially. Um, but with this Ace of Wands, it's like, it's time to go for it. Believe in yourself, believe in your ideas enough to go for it. Because when Jupiter, where Jupiter shines is like, you know, it, it brings good fortune. Um, and you could be like, this idea could lead to a new way of doing it. And that could also be this Capricorn energy, right? A new standard, a new practice. And that's why the Hierophant, the Taurian energy is also in reverse, because the old practices are, they might be a bit outdated and it's time for something new and long standing to come in. 
um, and you might be the person that has that insight. If you have been looking for, praying for a way to further something, this could be your opportunity. This idea could be your opportunity to move forward. But with the Ace of Wands here, you're going to have to be the champion of it. Four of Cups in reverse, Two of Wands in reverse. It's like, let me pull these up. And then I already have the message here, so I'll put these here, I guess. Boom, like that. With the new bottom being the tower, the tower upright. Sometimes some towers have to happen to make things better. But you get the Ace of Wands, the Four of Cups in Reverse, and the Two of Wands upright. There's the Four of Cups in Reverse. Excuse me. This is sticking to this brand new idea that might be divinely, divinely gifted or inspired. Because with the Two of Wands in Reverse, we're going to the crown instead of going to the brood. Right? So this could have been you like you received this, you download, this is a download and it's going to bring you out of this four of cups state. But you sort of like sometimes that dissatisfaction that we feel within ourselves and within our environment is enough for us to really let these tower moments happen. Because there's a lot of earth here and all of the, a lot of the fire well, I guess the only fire was the, the strength. And the three of wands, I guess, is fire. It's like there's a lot of tradition here. And the wands, yeah, all the wands, all the fires in reverse. Um, You're not really giving it an opportunity to... It's like you're trying to spark a fire, but you have no kindling. Right? So it's like, you know, sometimes you have to turn on the gas if you want, if you want the stove to turn on, <laughs> Juris. <laughs> you can't light the stove if there isn't any gas. Um, and the gas is here between the Knight of Cups and the Page of um, Wands. That's just enough gas to get you started. And that's all you really have to do. Again, with the Capricorn energy, it's like baby steps, right? You don't have to dive full in, um, but you have to start somewhere. And that's what I have for you, Juris. Um, all the best. I hope this resonates on some level. Again, um, you know, if I gave a work example and you think it fits more to some other kind of relationship or a situation, whatever, it's all mutable. It's all fluid. This is general. Um, but the energies can play out in many different areas. So I hope you have a great rest of whatever day or next day, depending on when you watch this. Have a great year. Have a great life. Just have a great life, Juris. Um, and keep up the good work because I like to be comfortable. I've got a lot of Taurus in my chart. So <laughs> somebody got to find new ways to be comfortable. You know, somebody got to move us from box springs to memory foam. <laughs> All right, I'll catch y'all later. Have a good one. Bye.